Amy, thank you. Sorry to keep you waiting, but uh, I was on a call with my A5 commissioner colleagues, as I have been a lot recently, uh, discussing together the situation that we're in. And uh, we're in a very fluid situation, obviously uncharted territory for us and, uh, and for you as well, I assume. Uh, then it changes daily. It did change weekly at one point in time. It changes daily now and uh, may well be changing hourly. Right now, we are uh, ready to tip the afternoon session. We want to provide uh, an opportunity to continue to compete in this tournament for our players. Our understanding and, and belief is that that is what they would want. Uh, it'll be under unique circumstances. And uh, will certainly be a, a moment and a tournament that those players will remember for unusual reasons. Uh, a tournament that uh, you will remember because you'll be covering one unlike any other. A tournament that I'll remember because I've certainly never seen one like this or a situation like this. Over the past uh, two to three weeks, we as a league have been in almost constant conversations uh, with the health authorities locally and in the state of North Carolina with uh, the CDC uh, and with the NCAA. And that has, uh, those conversations and the advice that we have been given has changed along the way, as you well know. Uh, we try to make the best decisions we can make based on the best information that we can get at the time we make those decisions. And I think we have done that. But with a situation that is as fluid as this one seems to be, now on a daily and, and sometimes hourly basis, uh, that gets to be more and more challenging. We had thought uh, going into this tournament that once the decision was made to play, we would have the opportunity to complete the tournament. As it has turned out, obviously that opportunity uh, did, did, not, did not happen. We've had to make adjustments. Hopefully we won't have to make another adjustment during the next few days, but if it is deemed appropriate to do so and necessary to do so, uh, we would do so. That's the type of fluid situation that we're in. We want the uh, environment that the players will play in today to be as good as it can be, given the circumstances. Um, and that's what we've tried, that's what we'll be trying to create. Uh, but obviously it, uh, it will be different. Uh, the most important aspect of this is the uh, protection of fans and anybody associated with this particular tournament, uh, as well as the greater population. And uh, as I've said, it, that, Doing, going about that in the most appropriate way uh, has changed and could possibly change again. And what the NCAA is doing next week could possibly 
change again. Uh, so this is something that's much bigger than this tournament, much broader than this locale, because it's, it's worldwide. And uh, as I said, something we haven't faced uh, in, our life, in our lifetime. So let me stop there. I, uh, I will tell you the way we make decisions in our league um, generally is by consensus. That's the way I like to operate. It's the way I've tried to operate for 23 years now. And it's worked for us. I think we have an excellent uh, culture in the league of trust. And that comes in really handy when you have a crisis situation, and this is a crisis situation. We uh, speak with regularity with our athletics directors and presidents, as we did yesterday. If we need to do so again, we will do that on, on a daily basis as we move forward. And obviously this won't stop with this particular tournament because we will move forward in terms of uh, the spring sports and their regular season competition and uh, our ACC championship events. So we'll be making determinations on that. We've already had several discussions on that and uh, we'll, we'll move quickly on, on those decisions as well. The NBA has suspended its season until further notice. Is What's the difference between the decision being made by the major conferences now and the NBA and other professional sports organizations? Is it because college sports right now are heading into their postseason and this is where you make a lot of money? No, I wouldn't say it's because of that. I'd say it's because the NBA made the decision when uh, one of their players uh, contracted the, the virus. I think that's the, the biggest difference. Uh, what we have to look at, I think, is should you make that decision before one of your players contracts the virus? The virus? I don't know the answer to that right now. But that's one of the tough questions that's there that you weigh uh, as you evaluate all, all this.